Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is part 30 of Tafsir al-Sa'di. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Inna al-lazina yaktumuna ma anzal Allahu min al-bayyinati wal-huda min ba'di ma bayyannahu lin-nasi fi al-kitabi ulaika yal'anuhum Allahu wa yal'anuhum al-la'inun. Those who conceal the clear signs and guidance that we have sent down after we have made it clear for the people in the book on them shall be the curse of Allah and the curse of the cursors. Except those who repent and amend their ways. Except those who repent and mend their ways and openly declare and openly and openly declare what they used to conceal. They are the ones whose repentance I will accept, for I am the acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. Those who disbelieve and die as disbelievers, upon them is the curse of Allah and of the angels and of all mankind. They will remain under it, i.e. the curse, forever. The punishment will not be reduced for them, nor will they be given any reprieve. Although these verses were revealed concerning the people of the book and what they concealed concerning the Messenger وسلم, and his attributes, the ruling is general. The ruling is general in meaning and applies to everyone who conceals that which Allah revealed of clear signs that confirm and highlight the truth and guidance, which is knowledge by means of which one is guided to the straight path and the path that leads to paradise becomes distinct from the path of the people of hell. Allah took a covenant from people of knowledge that they should explain to the people what Allah has blessed them with. That they should explain to the people what Allah has blessed them with of knowledge of the book and should not conceal it. For whoever ignores the covenant and combines the two evils of concealing that which Allah has revealed and deceiving the slaves of Allah, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ on them shall be the curse of Allah. That is, he will cast them far away from him and his mercy. And the curse of the cursors. This refers to all of creation. The curse will befall them from all of creation because they strove to mislead people, corrupt their religion, and take them away from the mercy of Allah. Thus, their punishment will fit their crime. By the same token, if someone teaches the people good, Allah will send blessings upon him, as will his angels and even the fish in the depths of the sea, for his efforts to benefit people, teach them their religion properly, and bring them closer to the mercy of Allah. Thus, the reward will fit his good deeds. The one who conceals that which Allah revealed has gone against the command of Allah and is opposing him. Allah explains the signs to people and clarifies them. But this person tried to conceal them. This stern warning applies to such a one. Except those who repent, that is, give up their sins out of regret and resolve not to go back to them. And mend their ways, correcting their corrupt actions. It is not sufficient just to give up doing bad deeds unless they are replaced with good deeds. It is not sufficient in the case of one who conceals knowledge either, unless he makes known what he was concealing and shows the opposite of what he was hiding. In that case, Allah will accept his repentance because there is no barrier preventing one from attaining his acceptance of repentance because there is no barrier preventing one from attaining his acceptance of repentance. 
whoever meets the conditions of repentance, Allah will accept it from him. For he is the acceptor of repentance. In other words, he forgives and pardons his slaves after they commit sins. He, he forgives and pardons his slaves after they commit sin if they repent, and he grants them his blessing and favor after having withheld it if they turn back to him. Ar Rahim, the most merciful, who is possessed of great compassion that encompasses all things. By his mercy, he guides and enables them to repent. Then, by his mercy, he accepts it from them out of kindness and generosity. This ruling applies to one who repents from sin. As for the one who disbelieves and persists in his disbelief, as for the one who disbelieves and persists in his disbelief until he dies and does not turn back to his Lord or hasten to repent to him, he is among those upon whom is the curse of Allah and of the angels and of all humankind. Because when their disbelief became an entrenched, because when their disbelief became an entrenched characteristic, the curse likewise became entrenched and will never depart. Because when the person is present, the ruling still applies. Because when the reason is present, the ruling still applies. They will remain, they will remain under it, i.e. the curse forever. That is, they will remain subject to the curse. This phrase may also mean that they will remain subject to the punishment. Both meanings are interlinked. لا يخفف عنهم العذاب The punishment will not be reduced for them. Rather, their punishment will be ongoing and severe. وَلَهُمْ يُنظَرُونَ Nor will they be given any reprieve. That is, the punishment will not be delayed because the time for reprieve which was in this world has ended and they can no longer give any excuse. وَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدَ لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الرَّحْمَنُ الرَّحِيمُ And your God is one God. There is no God but He, the most gracious, the most merciful. Here Allah Azza wa Jal, who is the most truthful, tells us that He is one God. That is, one that is, he is one and unique. He is one and unique. There is nothing like unto him in his essence, names, attributes, and actions. He has no partner in his essence, no equal, none like unto him, none comparable to him, no peer. There is no creator or controller apart from him. As that is the case, he is the only one who deserves to be venerated and worshipped in all ways. Nothing of his creation should be associated with him because he is the most gracious, the most merciful, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, who is possessed of great mercy that cannot be matched by the mercy of anyone else, for it encompasses all things and all living beings. By his mercy, all his creation came into existence. By his mercy, all good and necessary qualities are possessed by his creation. By his mercy, all harm is warded from them. By his mercy, he has made himself known to his slaves through his attributes and his blessings. He has explained to them everything they need and is in, and is in their best interests. He has explained to them everything they need and is in their best interests in their religion and worldly affairs by sending the messengers and revealing the books. Once it is known that whatever people have of blessings is from Allah and that no one in creation can benefit anyone else, this leads to the conclusion that Allah is the only one who is deserving of all kinds of worship. He is the only one who is to be loved, feared, and venerated in whom hopes are to be placed and in whom we should and, and in whom in whom hopes are to be placed and in whom we should trust and all other kinds of worship one of the worst and most abhorrent kinds of transgression is turning away from worship of allah to worship of his slaves 
and to associate those who were created from dust with the Lord of Lords, or to worship a created being that is controlled and helpless in all aspects alongside the Creator who is in control, the all powerful, the most strong, who has subjugated all things and everything is subservient to Him. In this verse, the oneness and divinity of the Creator are affirmed by denying that any created being is like Him and by highlighting the basic evidence for that, which is the affirmation of His mercy, among the results of which are the existence of all blessings and the warding off of all harms. This is evidence in general terms of His oneness. In the next verse, detailed evidence is given. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.